Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. Let's get going. So my first book is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Sully and we're both basically feeling following a captive princess and the main servant of possession of forbidden magic become unlikely allies on a dark journey to save, save their empires from the princess train of brother. So I gave it a 2 stars and I did not finish this book at 52%. Um, I really did want it to like this book just because it sounded so fascinating but I just couldn't get into it. Um, it was not that great and the characters was, were okay. I wish the world building wasn't so overwhelming because there were times where there was just so much happening and just couldn't really figure out what is what. So. That sucks, um, and honestly nothing much was happening as well, and I did have difficulties like figuring things out as to what was going on. Um, there were some things that weren't really answered, such as how did the deathless water work, because that was the main point of the plot, but I just couldn't figure out how they worked, even though they keep on mentioning it, so that sucks too. Because that sounded like a really interesting concept, so I really wish we had some clarity on it. And I just didn't really like the plot. I thought it was also really slow and boring, and some things were also slow and repetitive. Um, and I just didn't really like the insta love moments. And but like the there's this one particular scene, um, the interaction between. Mina, I think that's what her name was, Mina and Priya. I thought that was a pretty cool scene. So that's that. And I also find the whole concept of once, twice, four, and I thought that was also really fascinating. But those are the only two I give points to, and that's about it. My next book is The Island by Natasha Presta, and then basically we're following like for influencers, we have someone, we have Harper who likes, who is a bookstagrammer, we have video game Liam, beauty blogger Will, movie buff James, and there's like a whole bunch of other influencers going to this island because they got invited by the billionaire Malcolm. However, uh, but something starts to go amiss on this island, one of them gets missing in all the wilds. The wires and the cables gets cut off and things are starting to happen. So I gave this a 3 stars. Um, I thought I would have liked this book just because of the whole influencer concept. And in God laws we know we have too much of those in real life and they are not doing the job properly. Anyways. But honestly I almost gave it a 4 stars action because I actually really liked the book until the ending. The ending is just what made me give it a 3 stars. I hated the ending. Um, I feel like it was definitely an open ending. And I just hate those endings with thrillers. I'm like, I don't finish the book and just don't write it at all. Just stop doing open endings. Um, but yeah, the plot was really interesting. But some things um, would be repetitive as well, like they were saw a killer and then they would line and hide and repeat. And I just didn't like how Pasley, <laughs> Pasley couldn't think the wrong thoughts in the wrong moment. Like she kept, she was literally boy crazy. She was like, ah, he's so hot, he's so good, he he he. And then meanwhile, they were like all in danger. I'm like, when is your mind wandering? How can you think about all those thoughts? Considering what your situation is right now, you should not be thinking that at all. <laughs> like, really, where did he mind go? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there was also some things that also didn't really make sense. The, the Malcolm, the, the ones who own the island, um, he was a billionaire, and the only thing was to, like, to get out of the island, the only thing was to row a boat. There's no helicopters, there's no nothing. So, are you really a million then? <laughs> and like, honestly, how come the parents were able to just let the kids go? 
to this suspicious looking island. I'm like, you should not let your kids go, especially if one of them already got bad vibes from it. So, I don't understand at that point, and honestly, why would later on in the book, the influencers would just like run away throughout the park when the killers can easily see them. So, why would just run in the park? I don't know. Like, why would you just not go to the most safest place you can think of, lock yourself in there, and call for help? And just wait or wait until help comes. I don't know. And so, yeah, those are the few things I kind of really map myself to it. Um, I don't want to give the ending too much, but I just really, really did not like the ending at all. So it just left the answer uncompleted. So like, I don't know, I just didn't really like the ending. My next book is, a, is The Hacienda by Isabel Canaz. And this is the aftermath of the Me Mexican War of Independence about a remote house, a sinister haunting, and a woman pulled into the clutch. I love this book. I gave it a four stars. I love the interaction between Andros and Beatrice, and I just love the, how they managed to handle the struggles together. So I just really love this book. There was also the only thing I didn't really quite like was how the plot seemed to be dragging for a bit, but I really did like the suspense of it, even though the characters are sort of okay, I kind of like more Andrews than Beatrix. And just between the switch up of the pulse, it was kind of tiring, but so I wish that could have been held better, it was just really tiring between the two pulse. Um, but however, I do like the craziness times, as I said before, when Beatrix and the Undyings uh, had, had, like, those moments between those two and how they interacted. I really liked it. I do like the ending. I thought it was realistic, and should this book ever become real life? I think it was realistic, considering what happened. I think it was realistic. And so I really did enjoy the ending. Um, I'm... This is kind of one of the spoilers, even though it's mentioned in the book itself, but spoilers. I did like how they just like found this human body behind the wall, and but then she started to question herself because she showed it to other people, but the wall, but that wall, it's not there anymore. So then she just kind of started to doubt herself what she saw was actually true or real. And so, I really liked that part, so, I did like the writing, I thought the writing was great too, and yeah, I just really liked the whole plot and the mystery and the suspense, and honestly, this book has been compared to Mexican Goth, definitely like that, Mexican Goth, I forget the name, sorry, but I have not read that book, so I'm not sure if I'm going to, but a lot of people are saying the Hacienda is way better compared to the other book. But um, yeah, I really like this one a lot. So my next book is kind of like a dumb moment for me. Um, my fault, totally my fault, I should have known better, but it's The Cabin of Dr. Lang by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. The book itself is not an issue, but it's on me because, are you ready? It's the number 21 in the series of Aloysius Pendergast. Ta da! Why not research? I don't know, but that's on me. So, crazy times. I'm way too far into the series, as you can see. So, this has most multiple mysteries and is set in two timelines. We are following FBI agent Cool Moon, is assigned to the Colorado Field Office, and sent to investigate a murder at Roseburn Res in South Dakota at NY Museum of Natural History, LT Commander De Agosta and his crime scene unit are looking into a death of the museum curator found in the freezer. Agent Pendergast uses his resources to find a way to reunite with Constance Greeny, who in the previous book, Bloodless, left Georgia and returned to NYC in 1880. Oh. 
again my fault but uh, I gave it two stars and I cannot finish at 45% once again my fault what happened when I read this at book one maybe the ratings will be changed but that will we'll never know <laughs> Uh, so how, but anyways, even if I did read this in proper order, I think I would still find it boring. It did start by the first day I find this book interesting. Everything was really, really too slow when things are happening. At all, we had like, we always had characters talking and there was some, like there was some action, action scene, but it was quickly fit, finished. Sometimes the plot won't be too convenient for the campus, which again took out the plot, the enjoyment of the plot. I hate when things are convenient for campus. Like, no, make them think. <laughs> like, honestly, just making campus think. I'm like, oh, wait, maybe we should do this. But, um, yeah, so, and I just didn't really found the characters being too complex. The chapters were too slow and, and you know, just too painful, and I just couldn't really care about anything else. I just kind of find the whole, I find like the whole time machine kind of ridiculous because there was this one part when the char two characters, one of them has to build a time machine. I just kind of find that ridiculous, but yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I don't have too much to say because I just couldn't finish the book. I was a little bit halfway done, but I just gave up. So once again, it's on me. I should have done my research before reading this book. But now we know. Will I read it in the future? Probably not. Folks like folks that have really long series would take time and dedication, something I don't have. If there's a series that has like more than eight books, I'm not gonna bother reading it. But, you know, so like Heaven Potter, for example, it has seven books, that's all right. But, yeah, anything more than seven, eight, I'm just not gonna bother continue because I will forget. <laughs> and so, yeah, but anyway, so this is my September wrap up. Um, let me know what you have read. Let me know what you have read in September and please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.